All right, and now we're gonna review some Zoom, which I think you've all had some experience with, so we should be able to go through it pretty quickly. Um, there's a lot I wanna make sure you know how to do, so bear with me. Um, if I go through stuff that you already know, I might get to stuff that you don't know. I am in no way, shape, or form a Zoom expert. You, may, you might be able to teach me more things than I know how to do. But I go to zoom.us. There's another website you can do, leeschools.zoom dot com slash sign in and I sign in with my district credentials and it brings me to my meetings link if you want to get to your personal room link you can click here it's basically a recurring link that you can use pretty much anytime it is set to security so everyone goes to a waiting room so if anyone tries to access this link before you create the session they really can't do anything they can't talk they can't write they can't do anything so you can click start to start your personal room and you can copy this link by doing control C or right click copy and you can email that to students or link it to your announcement page so students know how to get to your Zoom meeting. But of course I'm already in my Zoom <laughs> and I can't exactly share my Zoom screen of my Zoom screen. It kind of shows what's on my computer. So if you are a lot, I think a lot of people have the question of which Zoom do I use? Florida Virtual School Zoom or Lee County Schools Zoom? It's my current understanding as of August 26th that the Florida Virtual School Zoom has a lot more features than the Lee County Schools Zoom. However, in order to have the Florida Virtual School Zoom, it requires you to merge your two Zoom accounts and errors are happening when you do that. So I strongly discourage you from creating any sort of FLVS Zoom at this time. We need to figure out those errors. We need to figure out why they're happening and how to prevent them. So for right now, I think the Lee County Schools Zoom, albeit a little bit not, it doesn't have as many bells and whistles, it functions. Versus when you link the two or merge the two, you lose some things. So some people can't log in, some people lose their chat feature, some people can't create links at all. So I, I just really want to encourage you to wait until there's more information on the Florida Virtual School Zoom. I know mailing is making it sound really cool and it does sound really cool, but it's not cool if you can't log into it. So I want to really encourage you to stick with the Lee County Zoom and uh, you know stick with what we know. So there are features that we don't necessarily have. Um, for your live lessons, you can, there's a couple things you can do. If you're in elementary, the elementary Florida Virtual School program provides you live lesson PowerPoints already created for your classes. You do need access to Dash to get those. Um, if you are in middle school or high school, you can create your own PowerPoint slides if you want. Um, you could also just open up Microsoft Paint. And, and use that as a whiteboard. So it really just depends on your course and what's easy for you to use, what's not easy for you to use. Um, I'm gonna open up just a little PowerPoint slide that someone shared with me earlier. It's not exactly a lesson, but I'm gonna open it up. And I'm gonna, you, if you are sharing your screen, which you'll be able to click on that little green share button, and I encourage you to have whatever it is you're sharing open on your computer before you click share. Because once you have it open, when you click on the green share button in the bottom center of your Zoom, it's going to show you all the tiles that you have open on your computer. It could be Google Chrome, it could be Internet Explorer, it could be Microsoft Paint, it could be PowerPoint, it could be Google Slides. It's going to show you what you have open and you can select what you want. You could just choose to share your desktop, but I just strongly encourage you to make sure that whatever is on your desktop is appropriate to be shared. Um, if it's your work computer, it should all be good. If you're doing it from your personal computer, just make sure your files are all nice and tidy and cleaned up. So once you have your PowerPoint slide open, if that's what you're gonna do, you can click present. And once you're sharing that screen, and I do apologize, I can't exactly show you how to share your screen because it's not letting me share a screen of sharing my screen. But again, once you click on that green share button in the bottom of your Zoom, it's gonna pop up a couple tiles of what you wanna share. When in doubt, you can just share your desktop 
and then you can kind of look around and see what it is you're looking for to share. Once you click that and, and continue, you'll notice that now there's like a green bar at the top of your screen. If you hover over that little green bar, you can move it out of the way. I did not know that for the longest time. Um, you just have to hover over the green rectangle and you rectangle and you can move it around. Also, when you hover over that green rectangle, rectangle, oh my goodness, I'm having problems speaking today. You'll see that there's kind of this dark rectangle that pops up above it. And if you click on the annotate option, you can draw on the screen. You can even type on the screen and you can select things and move them around. You have a mouse that you can click on. Let's see, whoops. So it looks like I might have just frozen. Let's see if I can undo that. All right, let's try that again. So I'm in annotate and I can, you've got all these little options. I don't know if it's showing you or not, but I can put little hearts next to things if students make comments on them. I can do check marks next to things. I can erase. I can undo, redo, undo, undo. All right, I can change colors on things. Let's see, let's, whoops. I can insert circles. I can clear all my drawings at once, or I could choose to save the drawings that are on the board. So it's really cool to use that annotate version. I don't know why mine froze, but hey, at least it's a realistic video. You know, it's frustrating when everything goes perfect in a video and then it doesn't go perfect in real life. I was just able to close out of that annotate option and then open it back up and it seemed to work just fine for me. When you are sharing your screen, I notice the chat option disappears. And that can be very frustrating when you're trying to do a lesson. But if you scroll over to the more, the dot, 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 you can click on chat and it will pop back up so that you have access to it. You can also click on participants so you can see who's raising their hand. I do encourage you to disable the chat and I will go into another option to show you kind of how to do that later. Um, here's, oh, in the participants, you can mute everybody. You can allow them to unmute themselves or not allow them to unmute themselves. All right, you never want to take away the waiting room option that always needs to be there for security options. That way you can only let in students that you want to let in. So again, there's really, you can't break it. You can kind of play around with it. There are breakout rooms. We can go into that in a different video. You can disable a participant's annotation. So your students can also write on the board, but sometimes you don't want your students to write on the board. So you can also show the names of the people writing on the board. That would be wonderful for some middle school kids. Um, you know, all of these options here, play around with Zoom. If you want to record, which I'm gonna strongly encourage you to do, and again, I don't think it's showing you, but when you click on, when you're hovering over the green rectangle, and then you have this dark rectangle above it, click on the three dot, dot, dot line, buttons, and then click record. When you're done with the recording, you can come to the same place and click stop, or you could even pause your recording. This will be very helpful for students who miss your live lessons who need to watch it later. It's also great for students who were in the live lesson but need to watch it again because it takes a couple times for things to click. So play around with your Zoom, try to record some things. When you're done and you click stop recording and stop share and end your Zoom, it will download your Zoom to your computer. You will need to tell it where to save it to and I always save it to my desktop and then I upload it to Google Drive. I will show you all of that in a separate video. Have a great night.